external monitor support for the iPad is officially here. Ooh, that feels good to say that. I have this is something I've wanted, uh, everyone's wanted for years now, and it's it's officially here. So to get external monitor support, there's a couple of things you have to do. First, you have to have iPad OS 16.2 installed. Unfortunately, though, not every iPad that can run that version of iPad OS is getting external monitor support. It's limited to just the M series iPads. So that is either the 2021 or 2022 iPad Pro with the M1 or M2 chip or the 2022 M1 iPad Air. It's unfortunate that it's not coming to every iPad, uh, but those are the iPads that are supported. As far as the monitor goes, it will work with just about any monitor. It doesn't have to be an Apple branded monitor. You can use uh, any normal 1080p 16 by nine monitor or 4K monitor or those big ultra wide monitors. Uh, personally, I use the studio display. Uh, this is a 27 inch 5K monitor. It is made by Apple, but it is a true retina monitor. So that means everything looks really sharp and really nice, which is good for photo and video editing along with just working for a long period of time. Uh, like everything's really nice and clean. It's not um, fuzzy. The other really nice thing about the studio display that I like is there's extra USB ports on the back and that is supported with external monitor support uh, for the iPad. So what I do is I plug my mechanical keyboard, my hardware keyboard into the monitor. So that way, no matter what computer I'm plugging in and out, uh, it, it pairs to the right computer. Now, speaking of a keyboard, in order to get this external monitor mode, you need a keyboard and mouse paired. Now, this could be just the magic keyboard uh, with the iPad and you could just put the iPad in front of the monitor, that works. It could be something like what I do where you're using like an external keyboard and either like a third party mouse or like the magic trackpad, something like that. You just have to have like a combo of a mouse and trackpad. It could be any, any combo. It doesn't have to be Bluetooth or USB or anything like that. It could just be any combo. You just need something like that in order to be able to use this new external monitor mode. If you don't have that, it defaults back to the mirror mode, which I am going to be dubbing as presentation mode, because that's what I would use if like I was giving like a, a, like a keynote speech or doing some kind of like slide deck or something like that where I was holding my iPad and going through a bunch of like slides and like showing off something. That's what I would want for that. I would want this mirror mode. Um, but the new external monitor mode, you need a keyboard and mouse for that. When using the new external monitor mode, you have to use stage manager on the monitor. Uh, there is no other mode to use on the monitor. On the iPad though, even when you're plugged into an external monitor, you can toggle between stage manager and split view. So you can use either one even when on the monitor. So all the aspects that I covered about stage manager in my iPad OS 16 walkthrough, they're all relevant here. It works identical, it's exactly the same. So the things I like about it and the things I don't like about it, they're all wrapped up in there. I will put a link into that video in the description below so you can go check that out. That video has like 15 minutes just dedicated to all the different aspects of Stage Manager and how it works. So if you're a little unsure of it, it's very comprehensive. The grid placement system that's a part of Stage Manager on the external monitor is really unfortunate because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of places to put apps. There's a lot of places I want to be able to put apps and there's a lot of sizes that I would like to be able to make apps and I just can't quite do it. It's not as free as I wish it could be as something like on the Mac. One thing I do is I turn off the recent strip. I turn it off on the iPad and I turn it off on the monitor. In order to do this, you go into settings, home screen and multitasking, stage manager, and here you can toggle between the monitor and the iPad and turn off the recent section. This gives me a little more room, but honestly, it's just less clutter and less stuff grabbing my attention. Now, when you're using an external monitor with the iPad, you get both displays. Uh, the iPad only supports one external display, so you can't like dual screen it with like two studio displays and then have the iPad off to the side. It's just one external monitor and the iPad, but you can use both displays at the same time if you like. 
I find this to be really interesting because you can set up like a bunch of widgets on the home screen of the iPad. You can't put anything on the home screen of the monitor, no apps, no widgets, nothing like that. What I've been doing is I've just been putting uh, widgets on the iPad and kind of keeping that as a dashboard and then the monitor is where I work. It's an interesting enough process, but to be honest, if I had the option, I would use clamshell mode. I would just close up the iPad and the Magic Keyboard, leave it off to the side, and just have the one monitor. As somebody that has just issues with ADHD and focus, having two monitors can be a bit distracting, and it could be just a bit much on my desk. I like just the single monitor workspace. But if you are somebody that wants dual screens, it could be really nice. You could have something like your task manager and calendar up on the iPad while you're working in like a uh, email app or Word or Excel or whatever. Like whatever your like main work focus is, you can have that on the monitor. Then you can have like your reference apps off to the side. Uh, you can move windows between the two displays very easily. You, you can just drag and drop the windows of the apps between the two monitors. Uh, there is also an option in the multitasking menu to move that window to the opposite display. And there's also a keyboard shortcut globe control backslash that will shift the uh, whatever active window you have open to the opposite display. Now, the thing that I have seen a lot of people not quite get is audio output. Unfortunately, this isn't as robust as the Mac. Uh, so when you plug your iPad into a monitor, if that monitor has any speaker system or any sort of audio driver whatsoever, that will take over as the audio output. There is no way to shift the audio output back to the iPad, which is unfortunate because most third-party monitors, not the studio display, because the studio display speakers are, are great, um, but most monitors, the speakers that are built into them are terrible. They are absolutely horrible. And the iPad, especially the iPad Pro, has very good speakers. So it's unfortunate that you can't like be like, okay, now nah, I don't wanna use these, let me go back to the iPad. Now, if you have like external speakers or headphones or something plugged in, or if you're like me and you have like an audio interface or something like that, what you can do is you can go into Control Center, long press on the now playing screen, and you can see all the different audio output options. So you can pick from there. If you have home pods or something like that, those will show up in this list as well. But to be honest, I really wish there was a way to just say like, hey, let's just use the iPad speakers or hey, let's just use uh, these default speakers when I plug into this monitor. Uh, because right now there is no way to set like default audio output. It's just going to default into the last thing it recognizes. Now I'm somebody that has worked on the iPad for the last six years, five, six years, something like that. It's, it's been a very long time and I've, plugged my iPad into monitors before that and used the old mirror mode. It's I've talked about it to death. It's not interesting anymore because we don't have to do that. But I really like this new mode because it is more ergonomic. I'm able to set up my iPad for a long period of time, write out scripts, deal with email, edit photos, all the stuff that I do on my iPad, I can do on the external monitor with a mouse and keyboard. And I love the fact that like, it's just my desk now, I can work at it. And if I need to jump to my MacBook to edit a video really quick, I just unplug one cable, plug my MacBook in, and I can jump to it. Now, as far as apps go, most apps work great right out of the box on the external monitor. You can scale the apps, you can put them in like kind of like a multitasking view. It's great, like they, they all pretty much work great. I just really like having this this better ergonomic setup for you know long writing sessions and long working sessions for me for when I'm working at the iPad. So that's external monitor support. It's finally here, it's officially here. I'm very excited, go check it out. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.